Hello all. Welcome back to another video on Snowflake scripting series. In this video, we will go through the exceptions in anonymous block, how and when those occurs and how to deal with them. So let us start with basic details of exceptions. So exception is nothing but an runtime error or warning that occurs when we are executing um, a block of code uh, in Snowflake. It is same as even in the traditional databases like Oracle and other, um, uh, SQL Server. So basically these exceptions as classified into two types. One is um, the built-in exceptions and another is user-defined exceptions. So built-in exceptions occurs when uh, during the runtime when when um, a particular error occurs. Uh, the user-defined exceptions are the exceptions that has been defined by the user and he himself will explicitly uh, raise those exceptions when that particular uh, conditions condition met. These uh, exceptions can occur either at the declaration section or at the execution section or even at the exception section as well. So we will go through the various examples and see how each exception occurs in each section and how to deal with them, how to handle them as well. So this is the basic anonymous block, sample anonymous block where you have the declaration section and there is a begin and end. If you see here, uh, I'm passing the employee number to this variable and that I'm using within this select statement where class, uh, passing the employee number and trying to get the employee name from the EMP table. It's a simple select statement with uh, on the employee table. So whatever the value that I'll get from it, and then that value I'm returning and uh, checking what I'm getting for the provided employee number. Uh, since I already mentioned there are the duplicate records on this table and uh, I'm putting the limit so that only one record because this variable will can hold only one record at a time. Uh, all right, so let's execute this and see how it goes. Okay, so when I execute this, so for one, two, three, four, um, ename is um, capturing into this v underscore ename variable and that's the value that I'm returning. So you can see that name of the employee as Adam for the given employee number one, two, three, four. So this is a basic anonymous block. So there is no issue with this block. Everything is proper and it's working as expected. So for example, let's go to the next anonymous block here. So here, what I'm doing is uh, instead of passing the numeric value to the data type number, I'm passing the string to it. So obviously this is going to uh, throw an error during the execution of this block. So this is a uh, example of, um, you know, uh, uh, exception occurring at the declaration part. That uncaught exception expression error occurred at the line number two Okay, at the, at the line number two position 16. So actually, so this is the comment. So the line number two comes this one and the employee number one, two, three, four is not recognized because it's a number data type. So here we didn't handle the exception, but it just rises at the declaration part. This is an example, uh, one of the examples rather to show you that exception can occur, occur at the declaration part. Another example where the exception that occurs at the execution section. So in this anonymous block, again, I have a declaration section. Uh, if we have, so here, what I did is in the, I removed the limit. And uh, as you know, that employee is having duplicate records for the given employee number one, two, three, four. Um, then uh, this select into statement should throw an error because, um, uh, this variable can only hold one record. So, and but uh, uh, this select statement is written multiple records. Let's execute and see how it happens. 
you can see that query with errors and then error is again statement error but the if you see the error message it is saying right so select into statement express exactly one written row but got two for this the uh, other example uh, how to handle this exceptions right so whenever there is an error occurs in the execution block so those can be handled um, by writing the exception and uh, defining the exception name um, so all the exceptions that occurs within the execution block will be handled immediate exception block that has been written within the anonymous so you can go with um, multiple exception handlers but however uh, it, it will go to one of the uh, hand ha handle only it cannot execute all um, handles so here i can go for expression underscore error okay so if you know the exact error what kind of error it returns you can go with the particular uh, you can name the uh, handler properly if you don't uh, know then go for the other but always other should be at the end uh, uh, end handler uh, it cannot be in the middle i'll show you that as well in a moment so let me execute this one and see here now so you can see that it went to the statement exception and then uh, it is throwing what is the error code and error message and sql state as well okay so here it went to this statement error uh, so it is like um, so whenever uh, the exception occurs it's try to go from starting if the ex exception occurred is same as this one it will go inside this one and execute this block if not, then go to the next one. If not, then go to the other. So that is the reason other should be always at the end. Uh, but if we put the other in the starting or the middle, then uh, it will throw an error. So that's not the right way of uh, defining the exceptions. Let me try to put that at the starting and see, uh, and try to execute it and see what will happen. Okay, so you can see that, that compilation error. So compilation uh, error is uh, the something that syn syntactical errors are uh, uh, the wrong way of defining the things. Uh, so this is the, during the compilation itself, the, it is throwing an error. So other when uh, when other is always should be at the end of the um, uh, the last handle in the exception block only one handle will execute at any point of time so if this occurs then the uh, the the any statements below this um, exception will not be executed directly the pointer will go to the uh, corresponding error uh, uh, exception handler and then it will execute the corresponding code what if the exception occurs at the declaration part if the exception occurs at declaration part so this exception block cannot handle the exception that occurs at the declaration part so for that what we need to do is we need to have the outer block and then define the exception handler and the outer block so when an exception occurs at the declaration it not even go to the the execution block or exception block of that uh, the same uh, anonymous block it will go to the outer uh, um, uh, anonymous block exception handle so let me show you an example here if you see here so basically i have a, a nested anonymous block within the main block and then here um, in the declaration section i have given the uh, wrong value to the number so then in here the exception will occur but uh, uh, however it will not be handled within this block uh, exception block so that uh, that will go to the outside exception block and here only we can handle those kind of uh, exceptions which occurs at the declaration part so let's run this one and see how it goes if you see here so outer loop exception so what that means is it went to the exception that is defined outside of the this block though the ex exception occurred at the declaration of inside block uh, we are dealing with it outside the, here and you can see that error type i have mentioned here as outer loop exception and here it is coming 
Okay, so that's how uh, we can deal with the exception that occurs at the declaration part. Okay, so next one is, um, so user defined exceptions. Uh, so the user also can define the exception. So this is a syntax. You can give any name of the exception and then exception and, and uh, give the uh, code and message for that exception. So here, what I'm doing is a date of birth and I'm trying to calculate the age. And if age is greater than 35 uh, years, and then I'm raising an exception here. Okay, so this is just to raise the exception. I'm not handling it, but I'm defining my own exception. And here, uh, exception code can be uh, 20,000, uh, one to 20,999. And uh, that range, you can give anything with the minus symbol. Those are the user defined ex uh, exception codes, uh, SQL uh, code uh, for uh, user defined exceptions. And here I'm raising uh, the user himself is raising the exception by, uh, explicitly here. So let's run this one. And if the date of birth is 1st John 1983, and then um, so it is more than 35 years. And then we are raising an exception saying that age limit exception uh, on line seven, it occurred here. Um, so age is out of uh, out of range for this position or something. So simple uh, message that I put here. Okay, so like that you can raise it and those can be handled here and uh, you can define that exception here. If you want to, you are just rising there and you can handle that here at the exception block. When that exception occurs, whatever you wanted to do, you can do here. Then you can put the same similar kind of object construct. I'm just uh, trying to get it from here and change it. Let me close this one first. Okay, so user defined, user defined exception, and then error SQL code is seems nothing but whatever we have given. SQL error message is nothing but whatever we have defined here. And let's see what SQL state will print for this. So let's see. So you can see here, it is P001 SQL state and uh, uh, you can see the error code and you can see the error message as well properly defined for this. So like that here, we can handle that. So earlier we just raised it, that was unhandled exception, but now we handled it and we are uh, printing the message that the pointer came to here and we are dealing with it, right? So that's how the user defined exceptions uh, works. And as I mentioned, code can be from uh, 20k12, uh, 2999, anything with the minus symbol can be given. So those are for the user defined exceptions. Okay, so another example is passing the exception from inner uh, inner uh, block to outer block. So um, suppose uh, there is the inner block and some exception occurred here and uh, we, you, are, you can handle here directly if it is uh, uh, within the execution block. If it is a declaration, obviously that can be handled outside here. Um, but uh, execution block can be handled within this exception, but some scenarios you might need to uh, pass that exception to the outer, outer anonymous block. Then you can simply say that rise. So when you say that um, the same exception that occurred within this block will carry uh, forward to the outer block and uh, we will deal with that in the outer exception. Okay. I'll explain to you one more time. So here, uh, since we have multiple records, so exception will occur here and then that will go to this handler. And here we are saying raise it, then it will come out and go to this handler and this message should print for us. Okay. So you can see that it went to the outer loop exception and uh, this is the error that occurred uh, from this one, but we didn't handle here. We forward it to the outer block. 
Okay, so this is another way of passing um, exception to the outer block. Okay, so this is all about exceptions. Thank you so much.